Hi, this is Dennis, and we're in for a treat today. We're going back to the 50s with a Pen 85. Now, I've done a lot of uh, Pen reels. I've basically uh, concentrated on some of the newer ones that come into my shop. But uh, this time around, I've got an older one. And I thought we would go through that just to show a couple of things about the old reels. Uh, go through its kind of history, talk a little bit about the uh, Pen 85 line, which includes the Dalmar 285 and the 60 Long Beaches, and uh, talk about some things maintenance-wise uh, that we can do to keep this thing running and fishing for a long time. So this one was brought into my shop. There's a couple of things to notice right away. Uh, on the older ones, it has a wood handle. So this, uh, this knob, turning tightly but turning, uh, indicates the age. The, the wood knobs preceded the uh, Bakelite knobs. Uh, the old 85s moved over to, uh, to this type of a structure. Uh, the um, older uh, 285s and the like moved over to the bullet handles uh, that we've come to know. So it's an older reel. Notice the patina on it. And I always get questions about cleaning the reel up. And uh, I'm not making this one a collectible. I'm not trying to restore this. But the 85 line always had less chrome than the, uh, the Long Beach series, the, um, the 60 and 65 line. So uh, you'll always see that. That's typical of the wear. We have some greening, so this was an ocean reel that uh, was being used. There's some light corrosion on it, and I'll take, uh, take the time in another video to go through that. So this one was brought in by a customer who asked me to make it mechanically sound. There's a couple of things going on. For some reason, the free spool release got reversed. I see that from time to time. Uh, we're missing a side plate screw, but otherwise there's no serious chips or cracks. There's some a little chip there which usually is the result of banging into a boat rail. There's an indentation on this side probably from flipping that uh, free spool uh, lever over time. But otherwise the reel is turning and uh, we'll just uh, we'll do a service to make it mechanically sound and I'm going to do two things that uh, should be done with a reel of this age. The first is I'm going to assume it has bad drags in it so we'll go ahead and replace the drag washers and then the second thing I'm going to do is make sure that these things are turned uh, turned around properly. So I think this one should be an easy one. We'll do this one first. We're going to move this to the point where it stays in the center, kind of like the dead man zone. I'm going to grab a, um, a screwdriver and try to remove the, the screw that holds that free spool in place. And we should be able to just uh, turn it around. So what happens sometimes with servicing is this trips, and when it trips, it'll be past the point where it can uh, ride on the side plate, and folks don't know how to turn it around, so they, uh, they settle for putting it on backwards. In this case, I think we're just going to be able to get away with flipping this backwards, which we did, and that'll just restore it. So that one was a simple fix. And then we'll go inside now, and uh, we'll look at the insides. So the insides of this line are pretty much the same as the 285 and the 60 series. Again, there's uh, minor differences, but the, the lesson to be learned on this particular one is going to be how to service the drags. And also, I anticipate, because of the age of this reel, that it'll have a flat spring for the anti-reverse dog. So we'll go show you how to set the, uh, the flat spring there. So I use a wide screwdriver here to take the, the nut off. Now, many of you are noticing that that's a, nut, uh, that's a screw. Keep calling them nuts for some reason. That's a screw, but it's not the typical uh, bump screw that you would see in a uh, in a pen handle. And that's a difference on the 85 uh, and the older 85s, particularly versus the 285s or the, uh, the 60 series. It's just simply held in with a handle screw. We're going to pull this off, and then we're going to back off the star drag nut and pull out the ferrule. So there's a little bit of corrosion on it, but otherwise this, this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. I like to clean up corrosion that has to, anything to do on the interior. I use a 4-0 steel wool and just lightly rub it. You could use a metal cleaner and some other things. Uh, right now this ferrule looks in pretty good shape given the age of this reel. So just brush that off. And now we're going to remove the side plate by taking out the screws uh, from the side posts. Now on an age on this reel, this is not unusual. We saw that the post was turning. 
So if you find that there's a post that's turning, grab a little piece of a kitchen scrubby pad, put it over the post so that you don't mar it, grab a, a channel lock pliers or some other plier that's not too aggressive, hold the post that way so if the post does turn it won't scar, there you go, and then we can just unseat the, uh, the screw that way. Okay, we'll just go ahead and pull the others. If, that, uh, if there's another post that turns, we'll go ahead and, here we go, no post turning. Sometimes you can grab it with your hand, particularly if you're wearing a rubber glove, it has a little bit more. Okay, we can get this one out by hand. Look at that, and you'll notice I'm using a parts bucket to capture all of my, my parts. Makes it easier for me on the return trip to, to put them back together. And this is uh, something I've pointed out on other pen reels. The, the screw that goes into the reel seat is shorter than the screws that go into the cross post, so you make a mental note of that uh, as you're disassembling these reels. The other thing to make a mental note of, uh, or if you, if you don't think you remember all of this stuff, take pictures along the way, use your, uh, your cell phone camera, use a, a video camera, use a standard digital camera. But here we go, we have another one that's turning here. Um, against kitchen scrubby and pliers, put a little bit of pressure on it. There we go, we were able to break that free. Okay, so uh, take pictures along the way, that'll help you to remember uh, the sequence that you did them in, the orientation of parts, and uh, maybe some missing pieces. So this is this reel for the age, and I'm going to guess this again is probably from the 50s, but this reel for the age is in excellent condition. Uh, very clean inside, uh, surprising to see given the, the uh, corrosion or, or the, the loss of all of the chrome and the like on the other side. Some of these posts are, are loose on this side, so I'm just going to go ahead and tighten them up. So these posts get loose because of vibration. So if this has been on a boat and uh, the engine vibration that comes up through the hull oftentimes uh, will cause that to uh, loosen. Now this is interesting, it was missing a side plate screw which kind of made this easy. I'm just going to grab that and there's always a debate on these. I guess if you were going to restore the reel you would want to clean them up as, as well as you could. In this case uh, I'm just looking for a little bit of metal polish. I use a uh, an auto automotive chrome polish to just Give it a little bit of lubrication here. And this is a 4-0 steel wool. It's the finest of the steel wools that are out there. It's not an aggressive or a coarse steel wool at all. Uh, but it does help uh, remove some of the greening on here. And again, I'm not trying to make this a museum piece. I'm not uh, looking to restore this reel at all. I'm just looking to take some of the corrosion off of it. And again, I'm just using a, a mild steel wool to do that. You could also use if the screening wasn't as uh, uh, pronounced, you could use that kitchen scrubby with a little bit of uh, metal polish on it. But um, I'll do another video that shows you how to clean up the reel. But for this one, I just wanted to take the time to show you the, uh, the reel itself. So this is missing a, a side plate screw. I have a bunch of side plate screws. Let me just go find one that's the right one. And again, we're looking for the shorter one here. We have it with this so that we can reattach that side plate. Now again, if I was restoring, I got a nice briny, bright and shiny side plate screw here. I think if I was restoring, I probably would try to go back and find one that's got the chrome loss on it so that it looked uh, typical for the reel. But again, I'm making this one mechanically sound, which is what I was asked to do. And uh, we'll leave it at that. All right, so now the sperm here gets a little bit of lubricant. I'm going to use a pen reels precision grease. Uh, just a nice bit of glob in there. And again, it's, it's this one's interesting. It tells the tale. There's no wear on this uh, clicker fob at all. So uh, it says that uh, even though the exterior of the reel shows a lot of wear, the interior of the reel is very clean. All right, so this is almost identical to the 60 layout, uh, the Long Beach and the Del Mar for sure. And we're going to take this apart and we'll, we'll just check those drags, but I'm going to do myself a, a little bit of a favor, my customer a little bit of a favor here, and replace those drags. So we're going to remove the four side plate screws. A reel of this age, sometimes these side plate screws 
stick. And they're difficult to turn, and of course you can't get a pliers in on those to do that. So what you would do there is you would come in on the other side of the bridge, and uh, you would uh, use some uh, penetrating oil like a WD-40 or something to try and lubricate that uh, the grip there. All right, I've cupped my hand as I take the side plate off because I know that there is a anti-reverse dog spring in here and I don't want it shooting. There's also two springs behind the yoke here from the free spool release. I don't want them shooting either. So I cup my hand and then gently remove the side plate. And there you go. There's the flat spring. So many of you that uh, may have been working on reels are aware that there's two types of uh, anti-reverse setups for the pen reels. The older ones have the flat spring, which is here. And the newer ones have the coil spring. If you happen to have opened up a reel, you're not aware of that, we'll show you how to reset the flat spring as opposed to the coil spring. Okay, and again, this is in beautiful condition for probably a 50 or 60 year old reel at this point, uh, at least internally. So we're going to go ahead and remove all the pieces and parts here. We're going to take out the jack, take the spool gear and yoke, and just take these springs off for a moment underneath the free spool. And I'm just going to hit this quickly with a little bit of WD-40. I'm going to use that as a, as a cleaning agent here, not as a lubricant. I just want to get some of the, uh, what little grease there is in here, I just want to work that off. And then I'll come back with a paper towel. And again, you can see the value here of using that protective lathe, uh, latex glove. Uh, I wish I could work with one on my other hand. I'm just not good at that. Uh, but uh, I just like to keep those general contaminants off of there. I'm also using a cotton swab to get into places that are a little bit harder to reach. And uh, this one's in good condition. So we're going to continue now. We'll take the... I use a screwdriver. Everybody tells me go use a brush. I just uh, been using a screwdriver all my life. And I guess I'll continue to do that. Take that... Um, steel wool there and clean up a little bit of the residual uh, dried grease on the yoke. It does a nice job. And again, it's not an aggressive cut for a steel wool, so it actually polishes it as opposed to um, scarring it. And that's what you're looking for right now. It's just a, restoring it as best you can. So that's a nice shiny piece. I'm going to check the teeth on the spool gear. Just make sure they're not chipped, cracked, or otherwise. And again, this looks like it has very little use to it. I'll go take the grease again and put a little bit on both sides of the yoke to make sure that the spool gear rides easily. There's two sides of that spool gear. One has the indentation. The indentation always goes to the spool side when you reinstall. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the teeth of that gear so that uh, as they mesh with the main gear, it, uh, it'll stay nice and lubricated and quiet. And I'm just going to set that down on my table because I'll come right back to that. Okay, we will take the two springs and a breath and put the springs in the indentation. I'm going to grab that uh, a little bit of grease and put that up here on the free spool release. Just shut a spring out here. In your moment. Easy enough to find, but again, a warning here, I guess. Uh, make sure that you keep your parts close. It's so easy to knock something off on the floor like I just did there. Uh, the vibration from setting down the, uh, the side plate just uh, shot the spring out, and it is a spring. Okay, so we're going to push down on that to seat it. We're going to grab the jack. I'm going to put that jack over the stud on the eccentric gear, and uh, we're ready to go. There's one more piece. We'll just put a little bit of grease on the face of that jack so that as it rides behind the bridge, it has the right lubrication as well. Alrighty, now let's go over and do the servicing of the, the washers here. We can pull the whole main gear assembly off. We can pull the support washer behind the, the main gear off. Actually, I'm going to pull this whole 
uh, whole assembly off here just to show you how to do that. We'll get in and we'll do the, the, the gear sleeve. To do that, there's a little retaining pin that rides through the, the sleeve. You can tap that out by grabbing another pin or a small punch. Grab that. This is the pin that you're looking for there. Put that in my parts bucket. And we can just slide this off. And again, nice and clean here. I'm just going to take some of the residual grease off of here. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion or the like. And I'm just going to run a cotton swab inside this. Since I have it open, I'm going to run a little bit of blue grease onto the post. Here you can see the indentation that that pin rides in to hold the cap on, uh, the pinion gear on. I'll just go back and reinstall. And then we'll grab that pin and insert that into the hole that's here. And you just want to make sure that this thing sits all the way in. I'm going to tap that. Now. But sometimes it just, for whatever reason, just rides proud on that ridge and makes it a little bit more difficult to get the, uh, the main gear back on. Okay, so turn the main gear upside down and push the drag washers through. This is what I kind of expected, even though it's in nice condition. Uh, these washers are older washers, they're brittle. and. Uh, should be replaced. So I've got three of the HT100 replacement washers. Uh, if, it ha if these haven't lasted a lifetime, they will. Uh, certainly for this reel, which was hardly used. And uh, I'm looking for the one more that's attached there. Okay. And what we do with these washers is we we want to just put a light coating of um, dry grease on them just to keep them flexible. In this case, I'm using Cal's Universal Dry Grease. It's a product that's uh, available at bait and tackle shops, sporting goods stores, and online. It's Cal's. I've, uh, I've had some good luck with that. I'm going to check these to make sure that uh, they're clean. Again, uh, we can use a little bit of the steel wall here just to take any residuals off of it, but these two are very clean. I'll go ahead and seat that back on. So you'll notice that there's three drag washers here, that's the top one, that's why it's all dirty, it took the brunt of it. But there's a round one, then there's a keyed washer which has an ear on both sides, and then there's another round one. So we're going in with the first of the round. The keyed washer always goes in the middle, and it seats itself into the two grooves that are in the, uh, the main gear. Side by side, you'll see that in just a moment. So if you put the, the grease on like that and you have protective gloves, you can just work the grease into the washer uh, before you install that. We'll go ahead and make sure this is clean, which it is. I don't want to put the steel wool on that. And now you'll find the indentations and it'll show, show easier on this one as we go to set this washer. And you can, you can see it better this way. There's an indentation on both sides of the main gear where that has to sit. Don't force anything. If, uh, if it's not seated properly, make sure that you go back and take a look and try and figure out the, the cause rather than forcing, forcing it. Because if you force it, the, the drag washers will not work properly. Okay, I've cleaned up the, the junk that was on that other one. I also know that that belongs on the outside. So uh, if there is any roughness or scarring, it'll have a minimal effect on it. Last one with the drag grease, and we'll, again, we'll work that in with my glove. The dry grease goes on, the last of the round washers goes on. And then the cap washer goes on. The ferrule's going to ride on this and operate the drag. Now I'm going to take my glove off at this point because this uh, flat spring is always a little bit more difficulty. So we're going to take this and install now. We install by taking the pushing down on the spool gear putting the main gear in place and turning approximately 180. Next up we grab the fully threaded screw, drop that in place in the lower, if you're looking at it, right hand corner. We have a flat uh, anti-reverse dog that sits here. And then this is where the flat spring goes. It rides on top of the dog 
around the post and seats into the side plate indentation. So we'll just start that here and again I, from the dexterity standpoint is why I removed that glove. Now we'll just kind of wrap that and seat it. And this is a spring, so you need to keep the tension on everything so that it doesn't pop. But this is properly seated. It's kind of tough to see right now because it's uh, kind of a hair with spring and it just shot out. I'm just looking for it at the moment. We we'll, should be able to find it. But we'll go for plan B. At, oops, I have it. So again, we'll show you how to do that again. And again, this is a tricky one. Sometimes it takes a few, few tries to get that set properly. But again, we'll put it on top of the dog. So I have a, I have a clear office furniture mat behind my chair here so that if I do lose parts it is easy to find it. Uh, I recommend it. Yeah, if, uh, just like that one, that would be a difficult one to find in a piece of carpet somewhere. Okay, so once I get that done, we can tighten that one up. Now don't tighten it up all the way because you got other ones that have the seat if you tighten it up all the way, sometimes the screw holes don't align. So I'm going to go on an X pattern. The ones that have the partial threading belong up top where the, uh, the springs ride on so that they don't get caught in the, the threading. Now I'll come over to the other side, put that one in. And then we'll grab the bottom one on the other side. And once we do that and we have them all seated, and there you go, that's an example of just how that little bit of tolerance can throw it off a little bit. The bottom one's not seating, now it is. Okay, so you back it off a little bit till you get them all seated. Then you tighten up in that X pattern coming across kind of northeast, southwest, or bottom right, top left, etc. Okay, with that we're going to give it a test here to make sure that it's working. I've got that going. And now we'll just uh, reassemble the core side. Star drag goes on top. Actually, this is a good point to put the, uh, the reel back together so that you don't trip over that star drag. A little bit of grease on the, uh, the spool shift. Side plate on. And button this up with the screws. And there's six of these, so I like to go east and west, and then I like to put one in the real seat to make sure that's properly aligned. And then fill in the others. Long screws to the side posts, short screw to this real seat. And again, it's, it's a little trick from time to time to get these things properly seated. If you over tighten the one, sometimes you lose the, the catch to the other. And this one, because it was missing the screw, may have been just a little bit out of true. So let's do it this way. Let's tighten this one. Go back and grab this as a centering pin. There you go. It's, it's long. All right, so if we push down on that, we should be able to catch that screw. There we go, caught it. All right, last two then. So these are fun reels. They're older, right? But it doesn't mean that it can't be worked. Uh, the parts are still available. A lot of times you'll find it's the same part for the, the Pen60, particularly those HT100 drags. So think of that, you got a 50-year-old reel with new and modern drive. Uh, it's all um, a testament to the real design. I'm looking for the, the ferrule now. And, uh, 
just uh, have a case of lost memory at the moment. Where did I put it? But uh, like anything else, I've got a lot of those as well. So we'll grab that for a moment. And I do apologize for being disorganized today. I'll just, oh, it furls in there. Already. That's why. That's, that's really a case of forgetfulness. All right, we'll put that star drag on. Put the handle back on. Now, normally you would put a drop of oil in there if you didn't uh, didn't re uh, remove the gear sleeve. In this case, we've removed it and lubricated it, so you don't need to put it put the oil in there. And then just put the screw back in the uh, the sleeve, and we're ready to go. So there you go. We've just tuned up a 50-year-old made it work nice and uh, look good and it's ready to uh, sit on a shelf or go fishing for a long time to come. So either way I hope that you've enjoyed the video, uh, learned from some of my mistakes like shooting that uh, flat spring out and uh, dropping pieces and parts along the way and uh, if you have one of these you now know how to tune it up and if you uh, like working on reels I would invite you to accept that challenge. I'm going to do one more thing, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on that uh, handle just to let that handle work in there on the shaft. There you go, it's already working. Okay, well I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.